Hello, Mary. Meet everybody. It's Lemmy and Finish Trade. Today, me and Michelle uh, wanted to talk to you about a couple different things. And uh, first of all, we realized um, that since I haven't done a video in a while, uh, Michelle said me is this probably would be a good time uh, for me to do one. Um, Michelle and I are having some personal issues with some people. And Michelle has discussed them on her video several times in a row. So it's not like hasn't been discussed or anything like that. Uh, you know, the thing is that makes it hard is that Michelle is really, really emotionally stressed right now because of the trouble that this guy is making. And I want to talk to you today about uh, abuse, uh, emotional abuse, and physical abuse. Now, this gentleman is doing both, um, had done both in the past, but in this case, it is emotional abuse. That is, he's going out of his way to uh, cause pain and suffering by proxy. That is, he's not actually physically abusing Michelle or anyone else. He's he's doing it through his proxy agents. In this case, the Clearwater, Florida Housing Authority is trying to cause that is their suggestion that they gave him and his decision to throw Michelle's name into the mix is causing emotional stress for Michelle. And um Michelle couldn't even get a good morning sleep today. Um, it's it's hard because I've seen Michelle go through a lot of this guy. I mean, he's he keeps saying he's her friend, but yet his behavior is so anti-friend that I tend to wonder if he even knows what a real friend is. Michelle has always tried to be very... Um, supportive of everybody and always tried to to put her best foot forward and try to make do with things in her life in her hard times and yet when you listen to people like this guy the first thing you get the impression is this guy just doesn't give a damn he doesn't care about Michelle he doesn't care about Michelle's needs he doesn't care about anybody and um and yet he says he cares about Michelle. But um, part of me says, well, if you care about Michelle, why are you putting her in the middle of the crossfire between you and the landlord? When it's really you and the landlord situation has nothing to do with Michelle. Yes, Michelle documented the porch situation in her vlog, but that doesn't mean that she should be under reprisal by you um, and you shouldn't be dropping names like that. Um... I think that that was where I kind of really particularly get a bit angry. That's because, you know, like I said, like I blew up on, uh, on the show's video. I'm not going to blow up on this one because I've already shot my wad, so to speak. So let me just be honest what I say is, just because somebody documents something doesn't mean you should try to, you know, incriminate the reporter, okay? The reporter is just trying to report the news as it is. Michelle has always been professional. Michelle has always made efforts to put her, you know, professionalism first. Michelle has never, ever deliberately tried to accuse or hurt anybody on camera. Um, Michelle has always shown a lot of restraint on video. And even in personal life, Michelle has done a lot of restraint. I mean, yes, off camera, sometimes Michelle gets angry and does start throwing out some barbs, but most of the time she doesn't really do that often. Just if you really push her just a little bit too much, um, or if the situation is just inappropriate, um, Michelle can take it very personal. And uh, the situation that this man is doing is demonstrating is what I said in the video about evil incarnate. We talked about good versus evil in the past. So let's explain one thing about good versus evil right now with this gentleman. Um, a good person does their best to consider the, the, their needs of other people and how their actions are going to affect others who are innocent bystanders. Uh, an evil incarnate person has a selfish streak to them 
that they are so worried more about themselves that they don't care about anyone else. They don't care about the needs of the public. They don't care about the needs of the private. They don't care about the needs of the friends or whatever. And they just do it just because they think it's they got to do for their own self. Uh, the selfishism is a part of evil. Um, it's it's unfortunately it's a very much a part of the human nature to have a selfish attitude or an oafish attitude as well to be an oaf. Um, you, you see it everywhere. However, Michelle has done her best to overcome those deficiencies and I think she's done pretty good. But what this gentleman has done is he's dragging a very good kind-hearted person through the mud for reasons I cannot even fathom. And I, it's just inappropriate and it's unfair to the individual that he came with us, came with him. And it's, it's, it's like if, I, if Michelle and I were to drag this cat and hurt him and cause him pain, Michelle, however, has never hurt this cat and she always treated his cat, cat with a lot of care and cleans his ear and, and his cat appreciates that. And he knows that Michelle was a truly a kindred spirit. Um, and she's very kind. Um, Michelle's been helping out the people in the yellow house to adjust to a situation which is a challenge for them as well as Michelle. Michelle has shown uh, uh, professionalism and grace under those circumstances, constantly putting the needs of others before the needs of herself. Now, some of you might say, well, that's kind of, you know, Pollyanna like, well, excuse me, but some people are like that. Okay. That they'll self sacrifice for the needs of the other people. But what this gentleman is doing is just so, so unbelievably evil. It's not to help Michelle. Despite what he says, quote, it's for your own good in his message. It's not for Michelle's good. It's for your good, mister. You want so bad to try to um, take revenge on the landlord, but at the same time, you're trying to take revenge on, the, on Michelle. I don't understand why you're trying to take advantage or trying to take revenge on Michelle. Michelle never treated you badly. Michelle has always respected you. Michelle has always did her best, and so have I to show you um, generosity and kindness. So why are you doing this to people? What's the reason behind it? It just doesn't make sense. But you know what the problem is with evil people is they don't make sense. They never will. I mean, to another evil person, that personality, they can understand it. But for a person who's a true, genuine, good person, um, evil personalities like that just don't make sense. They can't make sense. They, they just go above and beyond anything that they ever see. They don't understand it. They can't understand it because it's a sad truth. They, it goes beyond their comprehension. Now, because of his behaviors, we have a problem that we have to try to rectify tomorrow. And we don't know if we're going to be able to really rectify it without possibly legal counsel. And I, um, Michelle is not, is not guilty here. She's a victim. And, um, and I think that, um, that should be clearly documented, um, that she did not authorize uh, any kind of impromptu inspection. She never even knew anything about this. The inspector called and says, well, I'm supposed to look at your apartment today. You called the schedule inspection, right? And she was like, what? <laughs> I didn't call the schedule inspection. Who the hell are you? <laughs> And he gave his name and Michelle said, I never scheduled an inspection. I don't even know who you are. So you see, this is where client um, confidentiality has been breached by Ed. But at the same time, um, you know, he's trying to throw Michelle out of her apartment. Really. Why? I don't know. 
First of all, he hates my guts. Then he tries to tell Michelle he's sorry that he hated my guts. And then he goes out of his way and then drags her through the mud and says it's for her own good. And then, and then you wonder just why? why is he doing these behaviors? And of course, since me and Michelle are, are, are of, you know, of pure heart, it's we can't understand the reason behind any of this. It's the only, Michelle of course had a taste of Yule, so she has a little understanding of it. But even this wasn't, you know, it's advanced evil. This is not evil 101. This is, this is like evil 210 or something like that. How to screw over your friends. Um, that's true evil. That's something Rumpelstiltskin would do in Once Upon a Time kind of thing. Um, and it's the kind of evil that really blackens your heart. And, and it's the kind of evil that unfortunately is going to cost your soul and your friendships dearly. Now, I mentioned once upon a time, and um, I don't want to spoil uh, the show for those of you who are wondering why Emma Swan decided to carry the Dark One forces in her when she is of true good. And here's why. Because even though um, Regina was willing to step in, Emma Swan realized if I'm supposed to be the savior, I have to take on this responsibility to control the evil forces. So how it's going to affect her next season, I don't know. You and Michelle will watch the show. We will keep you pressed. So we see a lot of what happened to Michelle when she has taste of evil. Just how frightening evil is. But what he's doing what it's doing is true evil and it's it's hurtful and it's hurting it's hurting innocent people you know we talk so much about good versus evil in my program that sometimes you wonder is there any way an evil person can truly redeem themselves you know that's a great question. I don't know because it depends on how much they really want to change from being a truly evil person. I mean, we talk about the left door. We talk about how the true evil people don't get a chance to see the other side and just go from grave to cradle based on some overseer giving you orders and that's it. In other words, you have no choice. You have no freedom. You have no flexibility. When you're working for the dark forces. But some people would ask is why would somebody, for example, that was truly good want to become evil? Well, because sometimes people think evil is cool. That's the sad truth. I mean, we live in a world right now where evil is rampant and we see it everywhere. And some people are easily swayed to support evil because they think it's cool. You know, I'll be honest, it helps when evil has a very powerful public, a public relations campaign. And that, um, and they make it look exciting. You know. And then, of course, it doesn't help any when you got, you know, they see all the things that evil is doing and getting away with and, you know, like Hollywood is known for this and it's pushing this kind of lifestyle that's, you know, some people are just drawn to it like moths to a flame. And then you got people like Michelle, which myself, you know, after Michelle tasted evil, she was like, I don't ever want to taste that again. That scared me badly. And now it's supervised evil. In other words, that negative entity was only allowed to go so far per orders of Mother Asna. That's it. That's all they could do. And when Michelle talks about it now, she gets ice down her back because she's so, 
because she's so she's so scared of what she felt. It seeks her to admire. I mean, that's how much it scares her to think of what true evil is. And what this gentleman is doing tells me his nerves have been cauterized by true evil. Because that's another thing that happens with truly evil people is they have no emotion at all. They have no empathy. The only empathy they got is themselves. That's it. Again, it's that selfish, you know, behaviors that I mentioned. It's pathetic, but it's true. There's the people like Michelle were being hurt and these evil incarnate people couldn't care less. Because they see them as a target. They see them as a way to hurt other people. And Mr. Cat, you're blocking my microphone again. <laughs> he does that all the time. But you know, my experience with Michelle from living with her for all these years, no matter what, how many years it is, four or five years, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a blessing, it is a joy, and it's a pleasure that we work together to solve the problems in life. And one of the things that me and Michelle said, reaffirmed this morning was, we need each other. We love each other. And maybe some of you people may not understand what that means. But if you are married and you have a spouse, you probably do understand, at least to some extent. Especially if you have a loving marriage, it worked out well. You look forward to waking up with your spouse by your side, going through life, taking on the responsibilities that you have to do as a couple. Not to say that there isn't spouses in life that basically do nothing more than fight like cats and dogs. Yeah, they do. Some couples do. Some couples are abusive and hurtful. And yet, even those couples, something brought them together in the first place. We were watching the pilot of Grace Under Fire this morning. And we we're listening to Red Butler, who plays Grace, talk about the fact that she married this man that was abusive, thinking that she would made the right decision, only to realize that she made a mistake because of his alcoholism and his abuse, and and how he used to slap her around and emotional abuse her and all that. And Michelle just kind of sighed and said, "Yeah, been there, been to that multiple times in my lives, multiple lives." And it does happen. But in what this guy's done is they're not even a couple. And yet he wants to do nothing but to hurt Michelle. Why Ed wants to do that, I don't know. I just can't understand that. There are so many ways he could handle this situation without hurting Michelle. And keeping Michelle out of it. Why he dragged her into it, I do not know. I just wish I could figure it out and out. But if you happen to be in Clearwater, Florida, and you know where this guy lives, I don't want you to physically hurt him or anything, people. I just want you to tell him this. Let him know how you feel about what he's done. That's all. I don't want anyone to hurt anybody. I just want people to... I just want him to know. Because of his behavior, we don't know what we're going to be dealing with. We don't even know if we can fix this problem. Landlord is working on the physical structure of the building, but who's going to work on the structure of Michelle's heart? Who's going to, who's going to fix the damage that was done to her spirit? That... My dear friends, it's going to take a lot longer than two weeks in a contract with construction crew to do. 
It don't matter how many building permits you got. Fixing an injured emotional hurt is not something that gets done in two weeks' time. Well, as I said, I'm kind of sorry this isn't the most exciting video in the world, but, you know, maybe you ought to think about this in case you ever run into people like this. We talked about dark spirits before and dark entities. There are people in this world whose jobs is to do nothing but to cause you grief. It's not necessarily to kill you, but it's to help you to become stronger. I know Michelle deep down is a strong spirit who's seriously questioning this man's ulterior motives. But you know what? I can't do any more than this than she can. Michelle likes this at home. This is where she lives. This is her life. This is where her spirit is. She still lives here because she likes the environment. It's conveniently close to everything that she needs. And I'll be honest, some things that she really doesn't. But, well, you have to take the good and the bad, and that's what I tell her. So, you know, it's true. Maybe she doesn't need to go to McDonald's every month or something, or go to ABC Pizza every month or whatever. You know, maybe once, two or three times a month a year. You know, you know, two or three or four times a year. But I'm just trying to say is that the other things, the reason why she's here is perfect. She's got access to mass transit. She has access to the grocery store. She has access to the, to the pharmacy so she can go get her prescriptions. She has access to all her basic needs. She has access to the sip kitchen. She has access to um, routine everyday uses. She's got access to friends. She's got access to a environment where she can do a head and do her rituals inside or outside. It's a building that she feels fairly safe in. And her spirit has grown and in and her love and her heart has has been you know, with my with my love and her love together, we show a lot of generosity. we are a beacon. We are a beacon for others who are struggling in their own lives. We show people by their true personality that we can make it. But to see somebody try to squat home to extinguish the flame of, of, uh, of emotional happiness is just unbelievable. And, and I'm really, really upset with it. Edward, I hope to God that you think about what I'm just saying. Edward Mitch, no, I'm talking to you. Please think about this. You're causing hurt to an innocent person who has done nothing wrong to you. Why? Why can't you just leave it alone? Well, guys, that's all I've got to say for today. It's uh, it's going to be warm, and, and I know Michelle was going to do a video, too. At least I think she was. But uh, then we got up here to the studio this morning. She said, Loom, I don't really know what to talk about. I've already talked about what I said this morning. I don't really know what else to say. I said, well, since I haven't done one in a while, I'm going to take a chance. And she said, okay. You should, because you haven't done one in a while. Incidentally, Michelle did cancel Facebook in part because of this man's behavior, but also because um, Facebook... 
it was just not of any real value to Michelle anymore. Seems like Michelle has kind of drawn within herself more and more like a like a um I don't know how to describe it. She's just she's kinda of become she's kinda of withdrawn from everything. If that makes any sense. I want Michelle to come out of her shell. I want Michelle to open her doors and her heart and keep it open. But it's people like this that are hurting her recovery in so many ways. It's like they're trying to take a sledgehammer to a social butterfly. Why? I don't know. Michelle doesn't need that. She needs your support, your emotional support. And so I'm asking anybody today who hears this video, and I know my videos don't get as many popular votes as Michelle's do. Please keep Michelle in your prayers because we, she specifically, I mean, I, I could use the help too because, I mean, I have to see how much Michelle has suffered unduly because of this behavior. She really needs your support, emotional support. And that, uh, you know, and she really would definitely benefit from, you know, at least you speaking up, you know, and talking with her. Also, don't forget that we are still going to try to do and ask us anything on, on Friday. Now, when, we don't know. But here's the deal. As we have said on her channel, you got to get your questions in by Thursday night by 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay? Now, you can do several ways. You can, A, email them to us. Uh, you can email to me at l-u-m-i-f-i-n-i-s-t-r-a at gmail.com. Or you can email them to Michelle at B-I-C-H-E-L-A-3 at gmail.com. Or you can send them at Google Plus at plus L-U-M-I-F-I-N-I-S-T-R-A. Or Michelle at plus M-I-C-H-E-L-E -E space. And yes, there's a space between our names. M-A-R-I-E space D-S and dog A-L-E-N-E. -E. If you rather U.S. mail it, it's ask us anything in care of Michelle Marie Delaney, that's M-I-C-H-E-L-E-M-A-R-I-E, D-S and dog, A-L-E-N-E, -E, and the address is 112 Main Street, apartment number 9 in Winstead, W-I-N-S-T-E-D, and the state is Connecticut, and the zip code is 06098, and the country is the United States of America, and we will do our best to answer your questions. If they were questions that were already answered, we will just refer you to uh, the other videos where they have been answered in the past. Um, we do have the right to refuse to answer a question if we feel it is in bad taste. But we will do our best to refrain from um, doing that. Um, but, you know, we have to try to... Um, Keep the, the videos in good taste for the because it is a public forum and there's children watching and we want to keep um, the media clean for everybody. Okay, guys, I'm gonna let you go and don't forget, as Michelle would say, like or dislike, share with everybody, including your friends and enemies. Subscribe if you've not already done so to my channel. And always, because sometimes that's how we know when our videos are being watched. It's when we see the subscribership. Because we never can be sure if you're watching the videos like outside of YouTube, how many people are really watching our videos. 
And um, so when you subscribe, it helps to allow us uh, to have an idea if our media is, you know, working enough for us. And, um, of course, share it, like we said, share them with everybody. We understand that sometimes that means that the videos don't count towards our viewership, but that's okay. We'd rather see the videos get out to people to watch and to listen and to understand. And if you do know people who are talking about in our videos, yes, send it to them too and let them watch them. And um, I'm sorry for you Facebook people that you can't get the video clips anymore. Um, when we posted, that was because of the, the, this man's actions. I... I know that Michelle really wanted to keep um, presenting videos on Facebook, but it was just easier to just um, just deal with Google Plus and Twitter and Blogspot, and um, and that's what we do. And and um, it's maybe it's not the most exciting way of doing it, but it's the way we do it. Um. So that's it for now. I just want to say thank you, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.